All right, let's share with the people at home just one of the statements of uh, <clears throat> Adam Smith that you refer to in your book, which, of course, when I want it, I'm not going to be able to... Uh, oh, it's on page two. All right, thank you. All right, I've excerpted from your book, as you have from Adam Smith, so we can both, uh, we both, with apologies to Adam Smith, to whom, uh, from whom permission was not granted for this, but here is what... Uh, Phil's pretty good, but he doesn't communicate with the next world. All right. <laughs> By pursuing his own interest, uh, that is to say, his meaning the person engaged in free enterprise, the person who functions within the capitalist free enterprise system, Adam Smith says, he frequently promotes that of the society more effectively than when he really intends to promote it. I have, Smith says, I have never known much good done by those who affected to trade for the public good, meaning spare me from the do-gooders. Spare me from the people who intend to do good. Smith is saying if you seek, if you honestly seek your own self-interest within the free enterprise system, society will be the beneficiary. That's, right. That's a hard thing to... But take the last part of that. I've never Let's known see that much, again, Ronnie. I've never known much good done. No, I, you know, I don't have to see it. I've never known much good done by those who affected to trade for... Affected. Note he doesn't say did trade, affected to trade for the public good. Now that word affected is a very important point because you must realize that people don't always express their real interests or their real values. They say what they think will be attractive to the public at large. Let me give you a very simple example right now. General Motors, one of our major corporations, has come out against the deregulation of the trucking industry. The trucking industry today is grossly overregulated. It never should have been regulated at all. We never should have had it brought it under the Interstate Commerce Commission. It was brought under the Interstate Commerce Commission not to protect the consumer, but to protect the railroads at the time from the competition of trucks when they were first introduced into the 20s. Right now, there's a move underway to deregulate trucking the way airlines have been deregulated. There is nobody doubts that the deregulation of airlines was a very good thing for everybody. The deregulation of trucking would be an equally good thing. There are literally billions of dollars being wasted because of the monopoly in trucking. You're talking about fees uh, when you talk about deregulation. I assume you would still have some monitor on weight. And can the trucking industry benefit by using highways that I am paying for and may not uh, be using the merchandise? They that don't now. You now have a gasoline tax, which covers the cost of the highways. It is appropriate to charge for the use of the highways, of course. They ought not to get a subsidy. I am opposed to subsidies, and I'm opposed to the opposite of excess taxes. But they do now pay for the use of the highway through the, uh, uh, through the gasoline tax, and they should continue to do so. As to weight limits, that really has nothing to do with the ICC. That has to sure. do with uh, the capacity of different roads. I want to understand you, though, standard. that you're not, you're not such a purist as to be impractical. You, think, you don't think anybody's truck should drive over anybody's pavement if the construction isn't prepared to accept the no, weight. No, no, of course not. Okay. Uh, perfectly. Right. That's, uh, but that applies... Not only to trucks, it applies to private cars, it applies to a, it. to a private recreational vehicle. But what you ought to do is to allow anybody who wants to go into the business of trucking to do so. You know, there are people today who receive $100,000 a year to give somebody else permission to use their ICC right to carry trucks, to carry freight from one point to another. People who make a very good living without owning a single truck. The total value of these special permits, which have been given to trucking enterprises to carry freight, mm -hmm. amounts literally to billions of dollars. Now, General Motors and the trucking industry, when they come down to uh, Washington and say we ought to continue regulation, do they say we ought to continue regulation in order to promote our interest? Mm -mm. What do they say? They say the public will be hurt. They are affecting the trade for the public good. But do you think they're kidding themselves? They're saying, we, we don't want the wonderful individual people in middle America to be hurt. And, and you're saying that's not what they're... It's, they know they're not stupid. They're not Santa Claus. They're not Santa Claus. They and, are and people who are promoting their own interest, and they're affecting to trade for the public good because that's the way to get things done. Nobody ever goes up to Congress and says... Look, vote me a big bonanza of $100,000 because I'm a good man and I deserve $100,000 out of the public purse. No. He says you should subsidize X, Y, and Z because the poor middle class Americans or the poor people in the slums will be, be, will be benefited from it. Mm -hmm. by it. Mm -hmm. So you have two classes of people. 
the so-called do-gooders. You have the honest, sincere people. And they invariably end up being the front men for private interests they would never knowingly support. That's part of that. What's an example state. of that? An example of that are the 19th century Ralph Naders who got the Interstate Commerce Commission established. They got the Interstate Commerce Commission established supposedly to protect the, 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 the consumer. No, no. They, the do-gooder reformers, the Ralph Nader types, were sincere. They were interested in promoting the interests of the consumers. And they were complaining that the railroads were monopolies and they were charging too high freight rates. And we had to get the government in in order to, uh, to eliminate that exploitation of the consumer. But who benefited from it? The ICC was set up. The do-gooder, well-meaning reformers went on to their next reform, and the railroads took over the ICC. And they used the ICC to keep out competition, to raise rates rather than lower them. They used it in the 1920s mm -hmm. to get the control of ICC extended to trucking because that was the most dangerous source of competition. So those well-meaning reformers, not because they were bad people, but they ended up being the front men for special interests. And you have that over and over again. All right. All right. I know you've heard these. To Incidentally, least. I should point yes, out that this Adam little Smith picture tie. on here is Adam Smith. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Look. Uh,